I don't know if it's just me, but I can never seem to get my phone perfectly aligned with the wireless charging coil on the first try. Or the second try. Or even the third try. Yeah! It becomes an even bigger issue when you put your phone on the charger right before bed, only to wake up and realize that your phone has less energy than you do before refueling your caffeine addiction. That happened to me, and that was the last straw. That is why I built this. This is a what? This is a 3D printed wireless charging pad that I designed specifically for my phone, the Google Pixel 8 Pro. And it uses the enormous camera bump to line the phone up perfectly so that it'll start charging first try every single time. And I'm happy to say, I think it turned out great. Even better than I expected, in fact. But it wasn't without its challenges. What's up, everyone? My name's Corey, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. Follow me as I turn this old, decrepit wireless charging pad into something I'm not ashamed to charge my phone with. The first thing that I had to do was take some measurements of my phone so that I could start mocking up the design in Fusion. I made sure to take all of my measurements with the case on to account for the extra thickness that the case adds. I also made sure to add extra clearance so that other cases would still fit into the camera bump cutout if I ever wanted to switch to another case. The design that I originally had in mind had the phone completely surrounded until I realized how unnecessary that would be and how hard it would be to print. Plus, it would have looked horrible, so I'm really glad that I went back on this idea. I got this crappy wireless charging pad from my local thrift store for a couple of bucks a few years back, and it's always worked great as long as you get it perfectly aligned with the phone. In order to make this work for this project, I first needed to remove the four Phillips head screws hidden under the foam feet. After implementing the internals of the charger to my design, I realized that I would need to solder the power cable onto the board since the barrel jack would interfere with the camera bump cutout. After finalizing the design, it was finally time to move on to printing. For this, I used my newly acquired Bamboo Lab A1. This printer has been an absolute pleasure to use. This is not a sponsored video, I bought this machine with my own money. I just love it so much that I wanted to share my experience with all of you. This machine just works every time I need it to, and out of the box print quality is outstanding. I've been using an original Ender 3 Pro since 2019, so this was a huge upgrade for me. It also looks like it hasn't been cleaned since 2019. Yeah. That being said, Bamboo, if you're listening to this, I would love to get my hands on the X1 Carbon. This is where the build got a bit more difficult, as I've never worked with edge banding before, and I wasn't even sure it was going to be able to stick to plastic. Luckily, it didn't have any issues sticking to the plastic, uh, until I started wrapping it around the corners. <laughs> That's when I had the bright idea to try and use super glue to hold the corners down. This would prove catastrophic, however, on my first attempt when I accidentally squeezed a little too hard. But I kept going just to get some practice in for my second attempt. Initially, I thought the easiest way to cut the edge banding flush with the bottom of the pad would be to just run the edge along my router bit. But that didn't go as planned either. As I was struggling to cut the edge banding flush, I started to get a strange smell through my respirator. It almost smelled like burning plastic. Initially, I thought it was just the adhesive getting hot from the router table, so I continued. But then I realized the edge banding appeared to be melting. It was at this moment that I came to the realization that I'm a complete idiot. I somehow didn't notice that the trim I bought was made from PVC. This was actually really good news because it gave me a great idea to solve the issue of the corners not sticking. So I reprinted the charging pad and started to apply the edge banding for the second time. Only this time, I used my heat gun to heat the corners so they'll conform to the shape of the pad. That way, the adhesive doesn't need to do all the work to hold the shape of the corners. This worked beautifully. Unfortunately, that success was short-lived once I realized I still needed to figure out a way to cut the edge banding flush with the bottom of the pad. I even debated on making the pad the same height as the edge banding so that I wouldn't even have to worry about cutting it. Things would be so much easier if I just had one of those edge banding trimmers. Wait, I have a 3D printer. So I printed this tool that I found on Thingiverse using my Ender 3 since my A1 was already in use for another project. Well, that didn't work as expected either. So as a last resort, I tried the simplest idea I could think of. As it turns out, cutting PVC edge banding with a utility knife isn't actually too hard. Next, I installed four of these half inch rubber feet so that it won't slip around on the table. Finally, 
I can install the modified wireless charging pad into the base using the original four screws that I removed earlier. Finally, I can glue the fixed cable into the specifically designed channel using hot glue so that it can't get yanked out. And now for the final test. I'm so happy with how this project turned out. The amount of time and irritation that I've saved by making this is immeasurable. The best part is, if you don't account for the printing time, this only took me a couple of hours to design and put together. Thank you so much for staying until the end. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button, it really helps out. And hit that bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. I hope everyone has a great day and I can't wait to see you in the next one.